Hi everyone, it's Mark here again, and uh, I'm the founder of the Arts and Culture Network. We have over 80,000 members now across four LinkedIn groups and a growing number of subscribers, helping us with the aim to set up a global arts and culture support foundation that donates half its membership revenue to worthy causes that are nominated by our members. And that's my Kennedy-esque aim for the end of the decade. Um, I, one of the things I love to do is to introduce new members. So I'm delighted that Robert Rand has joined me today. Robert, thank you for joining me. Thank you, it's great to be here. It's it's wonderful opportunity to, to introduce you to the gang. So whereabouts are you based, Robert? I'm actually living in uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, in the Research Triangle. Um, however, I, generally, I'm on the road for between New York and Boston, uh, primarily Chicago and Cleveland, yeah. all of those classical music hotspots. Excellent. And um, which what's the red eye? Is that New York to Boston? Is that called the red eye, or is it? Chicago? No, it would be uh, coast to coast, and you know, an overnight flight from. LA to there'd be any any overnight long flight from coast to coast <laughs> right okay so one of the things I, I I know that you're um pioneering is cello bello I'm going to share my screen so that that people can can see it so um why don't you tell us a little bit about your background um and how you've got to to be running cello bello while I I show the website Sure. Yeah. I, you know, Cello Bell is a great story and I, I'm attracted to great stories. Um, but I'll, I'll go back a little bit and just say that, you know, my undergraduate degree was in music education from Westminster Choir College. Uh, and right out of college, I ended up working in New York for uh, a publication, a global publication called Musical America. And um Due to some corporate acquisitions early on, and unfortunately, the death of our publisher, I ended up as publisher um, way too young. And uh, in the process, got to know some of the greats in the field. And back then, in the early 90s, um, you know, the Cleveland Quartet was still very uh, popular. Uh, and so I encountered it the Cleveland Quartet back in the day. But uh, Cello Bello uh, was founded by the the cellist of the Cleveland Quartet, Paul Katz, and he teaches at New England Conservatory of Music. He's taught at Eastman uh, and Rice, um, really re remarkable cellist, uh, chamber musician, uh, and pedagogue. And um, he had this vision, you know, at, at nearly age 70 of uh, creating a site that would democratize access to really high quality music education for cellists. Uh, and so he started this around 2010. Um, and it's a very long story that it evolved. Uh, but ultimately, this is uh, this is a site that now, it last year alone, had close to 93,000 users. Um, and so I came on board as uh, one of the first iterations of an executive director to help Paul uh, manage the growth of this uh Pretty remarkable site with um, a, a tremendous amount of content and um, really what I call is it's an experiment in generosity of the cello community. Cellists um, of every level are contributing their time and, and energies um, to providing content um, and financial resources to keep this thing going. And uh, it's it, it is uh, quite a success story. So I came on board in 2021 and uh, with the goal of trying to make this financially sustainable. Uh, and that's and that's where we are today. We've had a, a, quite a bit of progress and we'll unveil a whole new website design in 2024. And we're actually launching, uh, this might be the first announcement made publicly, uh, but we will be uh, venturing into chamber music through the cello. So any chamber music that involves the cello, um, I think will will be our starting place uh, in March or April of next year. Um, but lots of um, string quartets and piano trios that are uh, already signed up to help uh, contribute content. Uh, well, I get I get the scoop. That's fantastic. Um, that's brilliant. 
Um, which reminds me, I must introduce you to my brother. He's a cellist, um, right. Gregory Wormsley. He used to be in the London Philharmonic Orchestra until quite recently. He was there for 20 years. He now lives in uh, Berlin with his partner and their daughter, uh, Lauma Skrida. She's a chamber music royalty from Latvia. Um, and um, they they work together um, now quite a lot, which is which is great. Lauma is what is and Sophie Mutter's preferred accompanist as well. So um, Greg will be fascinated with this, not least because he has a Facebook group with, I think, 7000 cellists on it. So there may well be some some cross promotion with that. Congratulations. This is a fantastic resource for, for those cellists. So yeah. and it's at um, cellobello.org. Isn't it? Right. Yeah. And, and I I'll be over in Berlin here coming up soon. So I'll have to connect with you and see if maybe um, I can meet your brother in person. Uh, that would be, I'm sure he'd be delighted. That would be fantastic. You might even want to interview, interview him while you're, while Absolutely. you're with him. Yeah, that would be, that would be great. Um, so there's lots of social media activity that um, on here, SoundCloud and YouTube and Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. So any any cellists or chamber music. Um, I should also introduce you to Julia Mornaweg, who as well, she runs the ch chamber music box. Uh, she's a, a full member as well. So I'll make sure that I, I introduce you, but congratulations on that, that which is great. Wherever yeah. this video appears, we'll make sure the links are available, um, which is great. But um, so uh, it's the fun bit next. Um, I'd like to, we've done this so many times. It's great fun. It's a wonderful icebreaker. Um, the links will, um, our members can follow the links to learn more about you and the work that you're doing and about Cello Bello. But this is my opportunity to, to sort of break the ice a little bit with some fun. And um, we do that with two, uh, two things. The first is the arts and culture hot top 10. So I shall be asking you for your, favorite and the reasons for it across art, different art forms um, and then we'll do the this or that game um, without without exception it's produced anecdotes and surprises so it'll be it'll be good fun right are you ready for that Robert I, I think so we'll <laughs> see it. we'll see <laughs> <laughs> okay so um, I, I'd like to ask you if you have a favorite building uh, and if so why I'd have to say Grand Central Terminal in New York. Uh, I mean, it, not only is its place in sort of history and um, railroad and all of that kind of thing, but the uh, architecture there is just beautiful. Every time I walk into that building, and I've walked into it thousands of times, but every single time I walk into that uh, main uh, space, I, I'm really transported. Um, and the Guastavino tiles, which are those arched ceiling tiles. Um, I've just come across Guastavino in so many different places in my life, um, from Asheville, North Carolina, to New York, to it seems uh, several other places. But everywhere I go, there's Guastavino, and um, it feels somewhat um, comfortable and, and homey to me uh, in that way. I love there's that. a place in Grand Central Terminal uh an arched ceiling uh of guastavinos where if you stand in one corner and you speak very softly the acoustics actually send the sound diagonally to the other corner uh the opposite corner and so people will you'll <laughs> whenever you walk into grand central you'll see someone standing with their just facing the wall uh talking very softly and somebody else on the <laughs> opposite corner who's listening to what they have to say it's it's absolutely remarkable and most of the time people just look weird unless you happen to know that this acoustical uh, phenomena exists that's great next time i'm there i'm going to be one of those weird people standing there doing that it's right outside the oyster yeah. bar so just remember that <laughs> oyster bar okay there's also a raised platform bar as well overlooking um, absolutely oh yeah. that's gorgeous yeah, yeah i've been there it's, it's really lovely Excellent. So you can have Grand Central Station Terminal. That's brilliant. Okay. And what about a favorite book? Hmm. Uh, it's going to be a Malcolm Gladwell book, but I, I'm not sure which one. Maybe The Tipping Point, just because it's the first one of his that I read. Um, but the reason I, I like Malcolm Gladwell is that every time I read one of his books, 
um, it changes the way I think. And um, he he's written several um, from Blink, Tipping Point, and, and a few others. But Tipping Point is is the first one of his that I read and uh, radically altered my normal way of thinking. Didn't he write Outliers as well? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I love that. That was fantastic. Another good book, yeah. Yeah, really, yep. really good. Um, excellent. So you're sitting in Grand Central Station reading uh, Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell so far. Excellent. I am. Now, um, do you have a favourite dancer, dance group, or dance style? Well, if we go with that theme of Grand Central, um, I'd love to see the Nicholas Brothers uh, dancing down the uh, stairwell of uh within grand central yeah i'm you know the era um you know 30s 40s oh, you know it's just my I feel like i was born maybe a few generations too late but um yeah i would say the nicholas brothers are, are probably i mean somewhat traditional I, I like a lot of modern dance as well but i'm going to go with the nicholas brothers you can have the Nicholas Brothers. There we go. Thank you. Um, now, this one's this one's a little tricky. I want you to as assume that you've been exiled from the United States for some unknown misdemeanor. and But you've been given the chance to choose the country of your exile, um, unlike Napoleon. Um, so, And you can do so based on your perception of that country's culture. So where would you be heading to? Sorry to wear. No, I said, wow. Um, I'm thinking here. <laughs> Spain. I'm going to go with Spain. Spain. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, it just feels very alive to me in terms of culture. Um, passionate. And um, yeah, I'm going to go with Spain. If I, uh, you know, I mean, think of all the Albanese. Uh, gosh. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to go with Spain. Spain. Yeah. That's a great choice. I love that. Now, um, so yes, so you're you're on your way to Spain. You're sitting in Grand Central Station reading Malcolm Gladwell on your way to Spain, um, imagining the, the, was it the Nicholson brothers um, um, dancing down the, the, the stairs there. Just, I love that. You see, I can already picture it, you see. <laughs> um, and for our members, they'll feel as though they're sitting next to you enjoying all of this. Um, so thinking back to last weekend in that in that place, uh, I, I'd like to know if you have a either as a participant or a spectator, do you have a favorite sport? Yes, I do. Um, but it really depends on the season. So I'm I'm gonna say my answer is seasonal. At the moment, that would be uh, baseball, you know, the baseball playoffs. Uh, also the start of the hockey season and we're kind of midway now with the football season so I would say all three of those but you know if you talk to me in March it's going to be March Madness college basketball and if you talk to me in September it's going to be tennis in the U.S. Open so I really um, it's seasonal at the moment at the moment I'm going to say baseball if I have to pick one because it's playoffs so we but in, in a it's going to be hockey. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's funny, isn't it? We, they, they say that we are two nations divided by the same language. And um, so we don't have baseball. I don't know the rules of baseball. Um, I'd love to, I'd love to learn. Um, we call football, football is something very different for us, obviously. Sure. Sure. Um, and what was the other one? Um, hockey is field hockey for us. Um, okay. It's ice hockey for you. But <laughs> right. So wow. is it? Yeah, it's funny. No, that's that's great. So you, yeah, I'll allow your seasonal changes there for your, for your favorite sport. <laughs> it's so true. I mean, I literally forget about certain sports when it's not in season, and but I'm always passionate about one sport. There's like there are a couple of periods in the year where there's a lull um, between sports, like just at the end at, at the end of the ice hockey and basketball playoff season before baseball really kicks in for the summer there's like a, a week or two week lull something similar in the fall before the start of football and um you know those feel really desolate 
uh, <laughs> because I don't have a favorite sport at that moment. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'm uh, as you know, we're big cricket fans here, right? Um, uh, but I'm 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 in the camp that suggests that any game that can last five days and be a draw, there's something wrong with it, right? Um, yeah. But in the right circumstances, with a with a warm brown beer sitting outside the clubhouse in the summer sunshine in the UK, um, uh, there are a few things to beat that. Watching it, watching yeah. that, the, the thwack of 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 leather on willow, as they call it. So, That's um, a sport you should learn because I've always been intrigued by it, but I I've never like you with baseball. I haven't. I don't know the rules. Yeah. Uh, apparently, uh, Groucho Marx was once taken to Lord's Cricket Ground to watch a test match. Um, and um, two hours in, somebody said to him, um, uh, what do you make of it? Uh, and he said, I'll tell you when it starts. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Um, OK, so that's great. We've got the sport. Now, this one's quite cruel. Um I'm going to limit you to one musical genre for the rest of your life. What's it going to be? I'm going to go traditional jazz. So 20s to 40s, uh, 1920s to 40s jazz. Any specific artists who would appear on your playlist for that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, Ella Fitzgerald uh, mm -hmm. would be uh, Pops. Uh, for sure I, i'm thinking you know i tend to be a, in jazz tend to be more vocalist and pianist oriented i mean if i had to pick a pianist it would be um earl garner we'll say nice love that that's 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 a lovely thought especially with grand central station in the background love it see there's a theme building there is a thing you see there is no better way of of, of capturing a sort of the sense of you i love doing this it's brilliant um now shifting away uh into a different art form do you have a favorite visual artist wow i it is going to be a shift i'm going to go with at this moment banksy uh, okay uh yeah I, you know i like i like the ephemeral nature of of art i mean i um maybe you know, there's an icelandic artist named oliver eliason i think he just goes by oliver um and maybe if it were an american artist it would be mark bradford but um yeah i'm more of a contemporary art person mm. and probably more um yeah uh, that's what I would go with. Banksy is, I, yeah, I, I like Banksy because it's uh, there's so many components to it. There's the fact that it's, um, you know, disguised and a surprise, um, and he's elusive, and these things just appear um, and make some kind of relevant statement, um, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, or largely temporary except for those places that somehow try to extricate the art from the building yeah i've seen that i mean he did a wonderful thing there was in east london there was a boys boxing club that was threatened with closure and um, and he heard about it you probably read about this and he went and um painted their door for them um, right which they were able to easily unhinge and sell and keep the club <laughs> and keep the club going loved it but then it just it, he's it's a a proper you know two fingers to the um, establishment, isn't it? When I think it is, he shredded one of his pictures the moment it was sold. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and by doing so, probably made the shreds worth even more than the original. Yeah, that's picture. true. Yeah, I remember that's true. Back in uh, back in the must be the seventies or eighties, um, uh, somebody there was a pile of bricks at Tate at the Tate um, and it literally was a, just a pile of bricks neatly arranged in a looked like a coffin about the size of a coffin I think and um, and uh, it fetched lots of money when it was sold it was literally a pile of bricks but um, the Daily Mirror decided that they would commission a, a brickie to, to create a copy and um, 
they kept it and it went it was on the front page and that's now worth more than than the original <laughs> wow it just it just <laughs> right. crazy. yeah yeah um yeah. excellent okay now you're in for some entertainment so um if you could choose to see any play or musical in new york what would it be oh historically or uh yeah currently anything okay well i mean hamilton was brilliant and it's the most recent sort of big moment i think um uh, from my perspective but Historically, I would say West Side Story um, would be the top musical. And my favorite play is probably Everyman. Um, it, yeah, I think uh, those are the two I'm going with. That's lovely. <laughs> and what about a favorite film, Robert? Ooh. Well, I'm tempted to go way off script here. Um, by that meaning the Grand Central Terminal. Um, it's a very tongue-in-cheek movie. I can't, can't believe I'm even going to say this, but um, it's a Will Ferrell movie called Talladega Nights. <laughs> and the reason it's my favorite is that it makes me laugh. Uh, and, you know, uh, how do you place any kind of value on every time being able to laugh so yeah i, I can't believe I, this is going to go on record that i said my favorite film is talladega nights but I, I i just said it mark so there we go there, there's no shame in that at all there is um one there's of the most like, valuable things in the world is is the capacity to make lots of people laugh um right. have you seen the movie eurovision with him in it i have yeah. love it yeah <laughs> love it Play no, I like the old. you know. There's so many movies like The Departed. I, there's you know, as I sit here and think, there's so many great movies. I mean, through time, but um, and I'm forgetting all of the probably the most important movies. But um, The Departed, I thought was fantastic. Mm. Um, Interstellar is the only movie I watch for the music. I'm Which one? Like, Interstellar. Oh yeah, <laughs> exactly. With the hands. I mean, the whole thing is just a treat, but it's, it's, I'm actually, right. I get excited about the music when I, when I decide to watch it. So it's great. Um, excellent. Just one more then. Uh, with the exception of me, um, who was the last person to make you laugh? With the exception of me and Will Ferrell, <laughs> right? who was the last person to make you laugh? Oh, there's no doubt about that. My, my partner, Allison. Um, yeah. I mean, we laugh a lot. And generally, the first thing we do every morning is make each other laugh. So uh, it's uh, Allison all the That's way. Brilliant. Thank you for that. That's lovely. I love that. I've got that picture of you sitting in Grand Central Station with Allison next to you, doing all of those things, thinking about those things. <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. Thank you very much, Robert. Um, we'll now do the this or that game, if that's OK. And yeah. um there are no wrong answers still. Um, instinctive, fast paced. We don't necessarily need the anecdotes. Um, I've had the surprises and the anecdotes already, which is great. Um, I'm going to give you two options and you have to choose one. Okay. Okay. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Radio or television? Television. Uh, car or motorcycle? Car. Comedy or horror? Comedy. Concert hall or sports stadium? Concert hall. Cat or dog? Dog. Test the water or dive in at the deep end? Dive in at the deep end. Good man. <laughs> <laughs> Orange juice, bits or no bits? Absolutely no bits. Library or museum? Museum. Beethoven or Mozart? Beethoven. Shower or bath? Bath. Cooking or being cooked for? Cooking. Fiction or non-fiction? Non-fiction. Shopping online or shopping in store? Online. 
online. Reggae or salsa? This is impossible. Reggae. Indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. Android or iPhone? iPhone. Start immediately or wait until the last minute? Wait until the last minute. <laughs> uh, I think we might have been separated at birth from that one. Um, <laughs> science or history? Oh, science. Tough one, isn't it? Um, it is. New York or Los Angeles? New York, no question. White or black? Black. Circle or square? Circle. Early morning or late at night? Late at night. Yeah, we were certainly separated. <laughs> um, <laughs> this will probably be the uh, the clincher, though. Messy desk or tidy desk? Tidy desk. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, red or white wine? We'll go with red. Batman or Superman? Batman. Numbers or words? Wow. Mark, you're killing me. <laughs> That's just a stalling tactic. Um, numbers. Oh, there's a surprise. Rare or well done? Rare. Basketball or baseball? Baseball. Mild or spicy? Spicy. Opera or chamber music? Chamber music. Sand or snow? Snow. Whiskey or rum? Whiskey. Um, stripes or spots? Yikes. Stripes. Vodka or gin? Gin. I don't drink either, but I don't I don't drink I don't drink, 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 yeah, I don't I drink, don't drink so either. All these alcohol questions. I'm yeah. out, but I have to remember <laughs> back a ways. Um sweet or savory snacks. Ooh, I alternate. Uh mm. we'll go with savory. Uh, traveling or staying at home? Traveling. Abstract or realistic art? Abstract. Contemporary or classical art? Contemporary. Um, Matisse or Kandinsky? Mm, I'm actually going to go with Matisse here. Mm, okay. Black and white or color photography? Go with black and white. Uh, theater or opera? Theater. Jazz or classical music? Boy, you're really putting me on the spot here, Mark. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say jazz. Okay. And finally... See the future or change the past? See the future. There we go. That was great. <laughs> Loved it. I hope that was fun. Yeah, um, it was fun. Um, I should now analyze all fun. of those answers and tell you, <laughs> give you some kind of um, report. <laughs> I, I, I was wondering about that. I, every answer I was saying, what does this say about me? But uh... <laughs> no, it's it's great fun doing that. I. I, I love it. It's it's um it's really good fun. I'm going to leave you with a sport related trivia question to mull over. Okay. Um, can you name five sports you win traveling backwards? I don't have to answer that question, right? No, you don't have to answer that. Um, we we can leave people in agony, of course, can't we? Um, in fact, we will. I'll put it in the profile when we publish this. Okay. <laughs> there we Excellent. go.
Um, okay. Robert, thank you so much for doing this. I can give thank you, you Mark. I can give you 20 minutes of your day back, which is which is always a, <laughs> a treat. Thank you again so much for being one of our Thanks. full members. Um, and I'm looking forward to welcoming you as a fellow of the Royal Society of Arts soon as well, oh. which would be great. Um, Thanks. And let me also just say, let me say to you, thank you for all that you're doing. I think it's remarkable. And um, I can see the amount of time and effort that you're putting into building a a global community, which is exactly what we're trying to do with Cello Bello. But I, I see all of the personal effort you put in, and it's it, it really is um, remarkable. So congratulations and thank you. Thank you very much. It's a, a single-handed labor of love still at the moment, but um, uh, it, it's it's really rewarding when I when I get the the, the success stories that come back with people being hired, um, commissioned um working partnerships um lyricists and composers getting together it's it's uh gallery owners and artists getting together it's 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 really um lovely to see that happen which when it does um but thank you um so much again for doing this um we'll publish this as soon as we can we've had a flurry of new members recently so i like to leave them on the linkedin group until they get quite a bit of exposure so we've got a slight backlog but um but I, we'll get to it as as soon okay. as we can robert don't go anywhere but for the moment thank you so much for doing this <laughs> thank you take care